Michigan's Supreme Court has ruled that a proposed state constitutional amendment that would protect abortion rights should be placed on November's ballot. The ruling yesterday overrides last week's party line vote by the Board of State Canvassers, which blocked the certification of the proposed amendment. Over 750,000 Michigan residents signed the proposal, more than any signed proposal in the state's history. Michigan joins several other states where voters will have a say this fall on to what extent abortion is legal post Roe v. Wade, with votes also scheduled in California, Montana, Vermont, and Kentucky. Joining us now, Democratic Congresswoman Alyssa Slotkin of Michigan and former Chief of Staff to the DCCC, Adrienne Elrod. She was senior aide to the Hillary Clinton and Biden presidential campaign. So we'll get overall context on this from Adrienne. But Alyssa, uh, how does your race feel a day after this decision? Well, I think all of us in Michigan up and down the ticket know that this is an issue that has completely galvanized people. And it's galvanized voters, you know, who might already be pro-choice, but it's also really galvanized voters who consider themselves pro-life. They just want some exceptions, some flexibility. So I think for, for us in Michigan, we, it was something that we, you know, we believed in and we got signatures. And when the Supreme Court came out yesterday, for a lot of us down ballot, it was a very important moment. So huh. Congresswoman, this has become, in many races, the defining issue uh, ahead of this November's midterms. Uh, tell us a little bit about, are you hearing from Democrats, Republicans alike about this, but also what are Republicans in office in Michigan saying about this issue? We've, I know we've been had many mm -hmm. conversations on this show about the gubernatorial candidate there uh, who said this would be an opportunity for an underage girl to have a baby. Yeah, well, look, I come from a district that is overwhelmingly pro-life. Pro um, it is a more conservative district, a Republican-leaning district, um, but it has been amazing how many Republican women have come up to me and talked to about how, look, I could never personally have an abortion, but I've never walked in another woman's shoes, wouldn't tell another woman how to live her life. What we're seeing, though, is a huge division between those women and the elected uh, Republican leaders in the state and the candidates in the state. Uh, the Republicans are the, the dog that caught the car on this mm -hmm. issue. They literally have been preaching about this and talking about it in black and white terms. And then as soon as it happened, they realized that politics doesn't make great policy um, and that particularly women under Understand there's a million reasons when you desperately want a child, mm -hmm. you may not be able to carry it to term. And this, the, the a 1931 ban does not speak to the realities that women go through. Well, and, and, and what I'm sure what you're hearing is what I'm hearing. I come from a pro-life area. Most people I grew up with consider themselves pro-life. And so many of them have checked out on the radicalism, the radicalism in Michigan, where you've got somebody running for governor saying a 14 year old girl being raped is a perfect example of why she needs <laughs> to carry the rapist's baby and have the state compel her to have a forced birth. Why 10 year old girls are fleeing the state of Michigan. This happened I, a couple of weeks ago. We had a, 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 a representative from South Carolina practically in tears saying, I know I voted for this. A doctor told me about a young woman who might die because of what we did here. This is crazy, people. You need to catch your breath and back up. And again, these are pro-life people that are saying enough. And yesterday, I saw a clip, uh, I think um, the recount posted mm -hmm. it, the South Carolina State Senate. They're debating uh, a proposal that would ban nearly all abortions in the state. They, they, they've rejected that, but opposition came from every Democrat, female Republicans, and some male Republicans, and they kept it from overcoming a filibuster. I want you, though, to listen to State Senator Katrina Sheely. She is a pro-life Republican from South Carolina. And listen to what she said about the lack of an exception for rape and incest speech is going viral. Here's mm -hmm. part of what she said. Why am I talking about this? Isn't she pro-life? Yes, I'm pro-life. I'm also pro-life of the mother, the life she has with her children who are already born. I care about the children who are forced into adulthood that was made up by a legislature full of men so they can make, take a victory lap and feel good about it. You want children raising children who will most likely suffer domestic violence and live in poverty, but you don't care because you've done your job and you will forget about them once they are born. 
You will fight my legislation on foster homes and adoption. You will fight, not support legislation to stop sex trafficking and pornography. You will not support my legislation for free meals for all children in schools. You're not going to help me on that. If you want to believe that God is wanting you to push a bill through with no exception that kills mothers and ruins the lives of children, lets mothers bring home babies to bury them, then I think you're miscommunicating with God. Or maybe you're just not communicating with him at all. Mm. By the way, by the way, uh, slow clap for her. And, and let me just say, as a Southern Baptist wow. that grew up reading the Bible, maybe a backslidden Baptist, but I still know the Bible. Jesus never once talked about abortion, never once. And it was happening back in ancient times. It was happening during his time. Never once mentioned it and for people perverting the gospel of Jesus Christ down to one issue. It's heresy. Go, if you don't believe me, if that makes you angry, why don't you do something you haven't done in a long time? Open the Bible, open the New Testament, read the red letters. You won't see it there. And yet there are people who are using Jesus as a shield to make 10-year-old rape girls go through a living and breathing hell here on earth. They've also conveniently overlooked the parts of the New Testament, where Jesus talks about taking care of the needy, taking care of those who are helpless, who live a hopeless life, because they believe, these state legislators believe, that life begins at fertilization and ends at childbirth. And Caddy, what a powerful message yesterday from a Southern pro-life conservative Republican who I guarantee you speaks for so many Southern oh, yeah. pro-life conservative Republican women. She echoes the feeling that the Supreme Court's ruling didn't take into account the complexities that would happen after it made that ruling and the tragic circumstances of women around the country, whether it is a 10 year old girl in Ohio or a woman who has a pregnancy and the fetus is badly deformed and she needs to have an extraction. The ruling didn't allow for the for the human complexities of that. And I think that's partly what's coming back to bite Republicans as we head into the midterms. And Adrian, that is not the first lawmaker that we've seen stand up and say, you know what, this is too brutal. It has, is having unintended consequences. She's speaking from a, a religious point of view, but there are, have been um, politicians in the South, local lawmakers in the South also speaking from a legal point of view, that this just makes them feel, even if they are pro-life, this ruling has made, and the consequences, perhaps the unintended consequences of this ruling, have made them feel deeply uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're exactly right, Caddy. I mean, she's not the first, and she certainly won't be the last. I think we're going to hear this from more and more conservative Republicans um, between now and the midterms and probably after that, because this is a law that's on the books. The Supreme Court voted for it. It's not going away anytime soon. But this is something that Republicans have been so focused on for 20, 30 years, and in, to an extent since Roe was enacted into law in 1973, and it's coming back to bite them. Because to the point that you just made, Caddy, they didn't think through all the repercussions, um, you know, all, all the life of the mother, um, all the circumstances that women have to go through when they are uh, taking care of their own reproductive health. They did not think this through.